Depuis maintenant près de quatre ans, ma vie a pris un réel sens. J'ai trouvé une façon de me rendre utile. J'ai trouvé le moyen de partager mes talents. J'ai trouvé comment aider à ma manière. À cette question qu'on me demande souvent, « Pourquoi tu fais ce que tu fais? » Je le fais parce que j'aime ce que j'ai créé. J'adore les femmes que j'accompagne, je les supporte, je les écoute et je les défends avec cœur. À chaque mission, je me répète que j'ai de la chance d'avoir retrouvé la femme que je suis et de laisser une petite trace dans la vie d'autant de femmes. Je m'appelle Cynthia Gagné et plusieurs fois par année, j'accompagne des femmes vers le Dr Véronique Lys, un expert mondial en retraite de mandette pour incontinence urinaire et d'implant pour prolapsus. C'est ici, dans mon salon, qu'elles me partagent leur histoire. Donc, aujourd'hui, j'ai un invité spécial avec nous. J'ai le docteur Véronique Kiss qui accepte de prendre un petit moment sur le divan de la Maison des Améchés. Merci, Dr. Veronikis. Thank you very much. So, are you agree if we do the interview in French? Sure. Yes. <laughs> sure. Did you learn some word in French since uh, since all this story with Amishek? Un peu. Un peu? Cool. Okay. Good. I think it's better if I talk in English with you. I think so, too. Okay. Good. Thank you to take the time with me um, and be open about how, uh, what we live with Ameche. So, you know, I want to ask you, this group is very, very special for me because it was the first time I helped women from British Columbia, from Australia. I helped women from France since maybe one year, but they had big surgery. So it was a very big week. Uh, we have woman from Quebec. And um, I know, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it was a big week for you. I think you told me that it was the biggest week you never had. So you did, I, I, I did, we did, but you did nine surgery. So what you learn about that group, the group 26, what you learn about the surgery, what you, what you, uh, what you have to tell me about that? Well, it's a very diverse group, not only in culture, mm -hmm. France, Canada, but British Columbia, Canada, which speaks English. Yes. Quebec, Canada, which speaks French, although it's Canada, that's different cultures. Yes. Um, Quebec population speaks French. The French population speaks French, but it's a different French. Yes. It's a different culture. Um, then you had the diversity of the cultures with the diversity of the meshes. Yes. You had retropubic slings, transobturator slings, slings that are called single incision slings with anchors, a uh, woman that had two slings. Patients that have what's called a prominental fixation, some that have the uterus in place, some that have the cervix in place, some that have mesh exposed in the vagina, mesh erosion in the bladder close to the kidney tube, um, mesh around the uterus with a transobturator sling. Yes. So it was one full week completely full of mesh removals where when it's a, a sling, the kit identifies the type of mesh, the location of the mesh. Although there's variations in the pelvis and there's variations in surgical technique by different surgeons, you have an understanding of where to expect to, to dissect and find the mesh. Yes. When it comes to prominental fixations, that's more of a surgeon-dependent technique. So it's very unique, like uh, what we saw this week. 
I, I've never experienced anything like no. this. Even it, in US, it's like a sacral colpopexy, but promotofixation fixation is the same. But same thing. Same. The promontory is a location on the sacrum where disc one is located mm -hmm. and the pelvis attaches to the sacrum. In the United States, English speaking uh, languages, they call it sacral colpopexy. Is the same thing? S same attachment point near the sacrum. Okay. The location varies. But what you see, you saw different about that week and about what you saw with that tree girl. <laughs> I want to know. So because... the, those three surgeries in particular, which were back to back to back. Yes. One on one day and then two the following day. There were similarities yet differences. The similarities are that it was along the, the right pelvic sidewall where the ureter and the iliac vein is, which is an extremely dangerous dissection that follows the course of the ureter to attach to the uterus or to the cervix. Two, two of the patients had a uterus. I know the answer, but I want to ask for the, the people, they, they listen to you, they watch uh, us. Um, do you use laparo laparoscopy? Do you use a senioscopy? No. I know the, the no, no. All, all, I, all, I, th all three had it placed laparoscopically, minimally invasively, but... But you... No. When You never when, use that? No, I, did, I, I don't use laparoscopy because it's not the same surgery. It can be done minimally invasively, but in my hands, it's, it's not the same surgery. And I must tell you that all of the patients that have problems with sacral copalpexy or prominental fixation invariably have it placed through a laparoscopic approach. Okay. And invariably, invariably, the mesh is off the midline because the bowel is in the midline and the bowel needs to be moved to attach the mesh onto the promontory or the sacrum. Okay, can I, can I ask you something and maybe you can explain how, what is um, laparoscopy but in simple world? Sure. Word. Okay, sure. just just very simple, because we know that word, but women don't know. They say, "Oh, it's a robot. It's nice. It's new. It's the best thing." But so, you know, I just want something simple that the woman can understand. What is the laparoscopy or celioscopy in French? Sure. So, let me start by saying, abdominal surgeries you make an incision. Yes. And you see directly with your eyes. Yes. In laparoscopy. Yes. You make a small incision and you put a camera, usually in the belly button. Okay. And you put two little ports, two little incisions, and you use long instruments with graspers okay. to do surgery. So you, so, they put hair some, inside? The, carbon, you know, typically it's carbon dioxide. Okay. Okay. And that's laparoscopy. The invention of, you said earlier, robot, yes. it's still laparoscopy, but the way to think of it is that robotic laparoscopy uses an interface of a computer to manipulate the arms. Okay, so my question is may maybe where, but you know, I'm just a simple woman. So they use, they use a, a, a computer and they do that like that and they, they look at the computer in the camera, you know, understand so, my, my... Yes, uh, so the camera shows the anatomy, Yes. whether it's conventional laparoscopy. Okay. And the camera looks at the anatomy if it's robotic surgery, through the interface of a computer where the surgeon sits at a console. A console and like a play, like a Nintendo or well, <laughs> reception? It's not, it's not exactly like that. No, but, but, then, but you know, I'm sure that I am not the alone that asking, asking, ask that question. Sure, so the, the surgeon sits at a console, mm -hmm. which has foot pedals okay. and hand maneuvers that manipulates the arms in conventional laparoscopy, the surgeon is next to the patient. Okay. In robotic surgery, there are people next to the patient, but the surgeon sits at a console. Okay. So you must be very good with that, that <laughs> computer? <laughs> to it's, be able not, to it's not the computer. Uh, it's, it's hand motions are affected or transmitted by a computer to the arms that are attached to the patient. Okay. So there's there's a steep learning curve to do that. And it's, it's you don't have the same, what we call haptic feedback. 
Where, what is the meaning so of that word? When you do surgery, if yes. you take an instrument and you touch tissue, yes. the tissue gives you a sensation back. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. With laparoscopy, the surgeon retains that feeling of okay. tissue. Okay. Tendon, bone, bladder, blood vessel, ureter. With the robotic approach, you do not have that feedback. Okay, so you use your finger to, to touch, to feel. Your eyes. Uh, no, no? You, you use no, for you. Your, you. Oh, your, when your I do technique. surgery? Yes, because you don't use that laparoscopy. I don't surgery. do laparoscopy. You I only don't do, do like uh, your eyes, your I, finger, I, your, your yes, instrument. Yes, I use all my senses. Okay, all your senses. All my senses. I want to, okay. And there's no replacement for the human hand and the human sensation. Only your, man, your hand. Yes. Okay. Why? That's what I do. <laughs> okay. Um, did you did did you try in the past? To... I tried robotics in the past. Okay. I tried. Um, I did a so. I've been doing this thirty years. Thirty years. Thirty years. When ro when the robot became available, mm -hmm. the hospital asked me to participate. So in two thousand and three, I did a sacral copalpexy with that robot. With the robot. Okay. In two thousand and three. Prior to that, I had done... 20 years ago? Yes. Okay. Prior to that, I had done hundreds, maybe a thousand open surgeries. Okay. Okay? And it was not the same. So as a surgeon, you think, well, maybe it's okay this way, but I know my results. I know my outcomes. Changing the, the modality of surgery should not change the operation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do the same operation that I did with an incision, but to do it less invasively. I realized that after three surgeries, that was not possible, so I stopped, okay? And I mainly do vaginal surgery and open surgery. And then in 2011, um, they asked me again to reconsider it. I did, I did a number of surgeries. And again, I saw that the results are not the same as I was doing open. For me, for my results, the way I want my surgery to be, the outcomes I want, the length of repairs for, from the apex, how well I fixed the prolapse, I had a benchmark of outcomes and complications. Okay. And I wanted that same benchmark. If I change the way that I create exposure, I want the same result. Okay. I was not able to achieve that. At the same time, being a surgeon of last resort, I started to see complications with patients that had undergone sacrocopalpexy prominental fixation with a less invasive technique, meaning no incision, yes. laparoscopically, celioscopy, same thing, mm -hmm. or robotically. So I inherently knew that my judgment was accurate that it's not the same surgery. The prolapse can be fixed, maybe not as good. And I confirmed that, that the three patients that I saw, they had a prominental fixation. Yes. And all three of them had prolapse. Okay, so it doesn't work? Well, it does work sometimes, but it doesn't work the same for me the way that I did it open. Okay. And almost every single prominental fixation, sacrocopalpexy that I have had to remove is because it was done laparoscopically or robotically. So I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a good approach. You think we, we, you need your touch, the touch? Nothing replaces the surgeon's sensation, nothing. Nothing? Nothing. The, the, the technology says, you know, seven degrees of freedom, the hand moves, the instruments move the same way, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing can compare to the surgeon's hand. I totally agree with you. So I, 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 I must to ask you, what do you think that of that kind of surgery? So that we saw that that week, you know, it was not good. It was not, not, not all three of those patients did not have good results. The one patient had exposure in, in, in the vagina, with several repairs. 
still had mesh exposure, still had pain, still had prolapse. The other patient had a prominental fixation with mesh in the bladder, <laughs> had the uh, calculus removed off the mesh, still had mesh in the bladder, predisposing to, to constant pain, urinary tract infections, and still had prolapse. The other patient had continued prolapse with the uterus and a transobturator sling. And you cannot do a repair around the mesh. No. You cannot do an elevation when the mesh is in the way. So it all, you almost have to go back to the beginning of normal anatomy to be able to take a conventional operation and redo it. You can't have an operation that works one way and try to do another operation. And certainly you, you can't put mesh on top of mesh. And I, I'm, I'm not saying anyone should do that, but someone might try to do that. It's not, it's not going to work. Can I ask you a question? And last question. Sure. Do you use mesh, you? No. 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 Zero. Zero. So, so it can, it's possible to repair repair prolapse without mesh? Oh, absolutely. I'll, absolutely. And you don't use mesh kit mesh and all of that? I never use the mesh kit. N you never used ne mesh kit? Never but used you the know, mesh kit. You know how is it? You know, I, I am on a lot of Facebook groups, so I'm... I saw if often something about you used in the past mesh. I want to ask you, you used mesh before? I did. Yes? Okay. I, did. um, I, I, I didn't use mesh kits. Mesh uh, kits means? Um, pro lift. Okay. Uh, so in a box? Not, not in a box. Okay. Um, I was trained to use mesh. Like all the other surgeons. And I had my own technique. I always looked at my outcomes, always looked at my complications, you never right. wanted to hurt a, a patient. But above all, I never did anything that I couldn't fix. Okay. And I'm a responsible surgeon. If something is not right, I will take care of it. I am responsible, I will take care of it. So I did biologic slings in the past. So when mesh became available for slings, I took that same operation that I was doing without mesh and used mesh. I had my own instruments that I designed mm -hmm. to do the sling placement. So as I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to change the operation because I had a, a, a robot or, or laparoscopy. I take my conventional operation that I know the complications, I know the outcomes, and I change one thing. Okay. I did okay with... Patients that are okay with the mesh. Okay. But I see what it has done, so I have stopped using it completely. And honestly, my results are the same when I use biologic materials and sutures than when I use mesh. Why they don't use that biologic uh, tissue or why they keep going to use that? Why they still use that mesh and they put mesh in the in woman? Training, it's what they know how to do. It's okay. What they, is it the same? Is it easy like mesh? You it's buy, easy. It's easy? Yep, it's easy. Hmm? For you? For me, it's easy. <laughs> for you, it's easy. Okay. Thank you uh, for your honesty. Thank you to, to, uh, to be with us. Thank you for yes. inviting me, for hmm? having me here. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I wish they would stop to use that mesh. I wish. Hmm. I'm not sure that will happen anytime soon, but... No? Mm. We can have a dream. Yes, mm? For the absolutely. Moment. Thank you, Dr. Veronique. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Merci d'avoir été présent. Merci à mes invités d'avoir partagé leur expérience. Suivez-moi sur ma page Facebook, L'Expérience à Méché, et mettez vos commentaires sur la vidéo. Un grand merci. Bye.